This cutaway shows the power unit with the shell in place. Notice how the ram fits inside the shell and is isolated from the primer by the safety prongs on the gas check. The Ampac tap system uses four color-coded shells, each containing a different powder charge. The red, or smallest shell, is used to apply red-coated taps and is used to remove red, white, and blue-coated taps. The white shell is used to apply type 2 and copper taps, but should not be used for removal. The blue or medium shell is used to apply blue-coated taps and also to remove yellow-coated taps. The largest shell is color-coded yellow and is used to apply yellow-coated taps. Yellow shells should never be used for removal. This cutaway of the shell will help you better understand its operation. The shell casing is a polyethylene plastic, which contains a retaining ring for the gas check. The primer and powder charge are standard shotgun primer and powder. The safety prongs isolate the firing pin from the primer until it is collapsed by tightening the tool onto the tap. These shells cannot be used in any type of firearm, and the Ampac tool will not accept any other type. This is a portion of the Ampac tap selection chart. Any conductor listed on the top half of the chart can be connected to any conductor listed on the bottom half of the chart. The chart is read vertically. To read the chart, find your largest conductor at the top of the chart. Then read down and scan across the bottom of the chart until you find your second conductor. Before we review installation procedures, remember that the use of Ampac taps may result in exposure to energized power lines. All applicable safety precautions must be followed. Before installing an Ampac tap, thoroughly clean the wires by an approved cleaning method. After the wire is clean, place the tap wire into the bottom groove of the C-member. Then place the C-member on the through wire. This method prevents placing your body in a possible series path. The back of the C-member should now be facing the installer. Insert the wedge with the large wire groove, identified by a letter or number, aligned with the large wire. Finger tighten and tap the wedge into the C-member to seat it. The tap should now be self-supporting. This illustration shows the incorrect method of installing a tap on an energized line. The method shown is unsafe because it places the installer in a series path. To load the tool, select the proper shell for the application. Remove the breech cap from the tool, making sure the ram is retracted into the power unit. Insert the shell, keeping your fingers and thumb clear of the tool. Always load the tool in the vertical position. Grasp the coupling nut and tighten the breech cap assembly until it bottoms. Tighten the gas release knob. This prevents gas leakage and allows the piercer pin to penetrate the base of the shell. After loading the tool, check the following three points before positioning the tool onto the connector. One, make sure that the ram is retracted. If not, remove the shell and repeat the loading procedures. Two, make sure that the breech cap is tightened. And three, make sure that the gas release knob is tight. After checking these points, the tool can be positioned on the tap. To position the tap in the tool, the C-member must be located in the correct positioning notch with the open side facing the tool head. Turn the coupling nut until the power unit is seated firmly against the wedge. When applying red-coated taps, the auxiliary platform must be used. Blue-coated taps do not require a platform. Type 2 taps are color-coded white and do not require the auxiliary platform. The C-member is positioned in the blue notch of the tool head. If the tool is correctly positioned on the tap, it should be self-supporting. Before firing the tool, check the following points. One, make sure that the connector is properly positioned in the tool. Two, make sure that the power unit is firmly seated against the wedge. Three, the breech cap must be tightened. And four, check that the gas release knob is tight. After checking all these points, the tool is now ready for firing. Although the tool is self-supporting, you can steady it by holding the breech cap assembly. The tool is fired by striking the gas release knob with a sharp blow from a hammer. Be sure to stay clear of the hammer and tool when striking. To release the gas, turn the gas release knob counterclockwise. Hold the tool away from your body as the gas is released. If the gas does not escape, close the gas release knob and hit the tool again. Then, release the gas. 
to detail what just happened when the tool was fired. The top illustration shows that the safety prongs prevent the firing pin from contacting the primer. The safety prongs were crushed by hand tightening the coupling nut which firmly seated the ram against the wedge. During firing, expanding gases caused the ram to force the wedge into the C-member. The retracting piercer pin allowed the gases to escape. This cutaway illustration explains in detail the gas release action. Before tightening the gas release knob, notice that the piercer pin is away from the shell. After tightening the gas release knob, the pin has pierced the base of the shell and remains in this position during firing. After firing, by turning the gas release knob, the pin is retracted, allowing the gas to escape. Remove the tool from the tap by turning the coupling nut until the tool can be removed. Grasp the coupling nut and turn the breech cap assembly and remove it from the tool. Pull down on the ejector sleeve to eject the spent shell. Make sure that you always point the tool down and away from anyone before ejecting the shell. Replace the breech cap assembly after shell removal. If for some reason the spent shell cannot be removed from the breech, replace the breech cap and return the tool to your amp representative for repair. When installing yellow coated taps using the large tool head, check the position of the yellow coated band on the power unit. This yellow band must be adjacent to or in front of the yellow indicator on the side of the tool. If these bands do not align, check your wire and tap combinations. After firing the yellow shell, wait approximately 10 seconds before releasing the gas. This will allow time for the plastic shell casing to harden after the high temperature of firing made it soft. All installed Ampac taps should be visually inspected for a locking tab feature this visual indication ensures a good connection has been made. Here are some of the safety precautions for you to follow after firing the tool. If the gas does not release, re-tighten the gas release knob and strike the tool again with a hammer. When you do not get a gas release, always check the breech for a dislodged primer cap. Also, check the piercer pin's length because it may not be long enough to pierce the shell wall. Never remove shells with pliers or by prying under the shell lip. If the shell cannot be ejected, contact your local AMP representative. To remove an installed cap, select the correct takeoff clip. Retract the power unit and install the takeoff clip by slipping it over the head of the tool. All takeoff clips are installed in the same manner. Next, load the tool with the correct shell for removal. Always step down one shell color for tap removal. For example, if you install with a yellow coated shell, use a blue shell for removal. If you install with a blue shell, you remove with a red shell. If you install with a red shell, you must use a red shell for removal because it is the smallest. Never use a yellow shell for removal because the charge is too powerful. Once the clip is positioned and the tool loaded, position the tool with the open side of the C member facing away from the platform. Tighten the power unit so it fits snug against the pusher block on the takeoff clip. The shoulder of the takeoff clip must butt against the C-member. The tool is now ready for firing. Strike the breech cap with a hammer. Turn the gas release knob to vent the gas. Then turn the coupling nut on the power unit to remove the tool from the connector. Remove the tap from the line to complete tap removal. Notice that the conductor is not damaged by either installation or removal of Ampac taps. This completes Module 1 of the Ampac tap system training program.